uh, look, uh, uh, your reputation is what keeps your customers with you. If you don't think that how you treat your customers and how you treat your employees will reflect how you treat your customers and how you keep your customers, you're certainly not going to be making your shareholders happy. You cannot have an unhappy customer and an unhappy employee and then tell me we are about maximizing profits alone and thinking of, share, of shareholders uh, out of And then it trickles down, as you can see here, from suppliers to our partners to the regulators. Even if you want to talk to government today, if you don't have that brand equity that says you are a responsible corporation, nobody is going to get you to sit on the table to influence, to influence policy. Because we have to sit on the table and influence policy as the private sector because they're talking about our future at the end of the day. So, and our brand as responsible people as responsible companies, as people that want to project themselves as such and act on it, makes a heck of a lot of difference for us when we talk to, to anybody that is going to influence the way we are going to be existing in the future. And then the community at large, obviously, because uh, look, any company is the community at the end of the year, a microsome of the community around you. So imagine that you are going to be uh, doing all sorts of things that, that your community is not going to be interested in. And then how does that affect the people that work in that side organization? It's about, about you. You live in the community. It's about your children. It's about your future. It's about everything that, is, uh, uh, that keeps us alive at the end of the day. So uh, how we touch our community, how we interact with it, is essential uh, and strategic to, to our sustainability as an organization. Uh, and then uh, after we do all these things, I'm telling you, you are going to have happy shareholders. There is, you know, you, but you can't, uh, and you have to always remind your shareholders that if they don't like the way you manage, they can go invest somewhere else at the end of the day. Because uh, there is choice out there. There is choice. And they have a choice. You say, this is how I manage. You're not the only person that, is responsible, that I am responsible towards. But I will deliver on the long term a reasonable return. And we need to always think about reasonable because maximizing can mean maximizing today and destroying tomorrow. So what is it that you want? Which maximization do you want? Uh, so how do we do uh, what I have just mentioned? How do we walk uh, the talk inside my, my organization? We, 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 do, we do three things. One is we actually act. We put our money where our mouth is. And I'll explain to you a couple of the projects that we work on and how we actually implement our responsibility towards the communities we're, we're, we're in. And we take, uh, we lead. And anybody that leads uh, is always in danger of being criticized. You're always... Uh, uh, not, you, you cannot shy away from controversy as you lead because there are so many issues out there and if somebody doesn't step up then, uh, and bring in the rest of the community with us, with us. So it is community meaning the community of entrepreneurs, the community of business people. Uh, and, and whenever you lead and you succeed, then envy comes in, which is good, because they will start to follow, because everybody would want to do the same. So we lead. We actually lead. We preach. We say, this is how we need to conduct ourselves. We, we create organizations that talk about sustainability because it is essential for us. And we're telling our suppliers nowadays, is if, you're not, if you don't think of sustainability, you're not going to be buying from you. So you create that culture of everybody, an ecosystem of everybody thinking sustainability uh, and, and, and working uh, within that framework. Uh, uh, and then at the end of the day, for you to be credible, you have to be uh, obviously uh, transparent and you have to publish and, you, and that's how you become accountable. So we don't only talk about what we do, we publish it and we, we show the world what we do. And, if we say we're going to publish uh, uh, our financial reports at the end of the year, then we're going to say we're going to publish our sustainability report at the end of the year because we think they go together. And we don't want to be judged only by our P&L. We want to be judged holistically also because there must be a return somewhere for the, for the things that we do in the community. And I'll talk about that in a, uh, in a little bit. So uh, uh, we, we have a strategic CSR as part and parcel of our work. And it, it, it is collective, which means it is not only uh, the CEO's or the founder's idea or a pet project of somebody in the leadership of the company. It trickles down across the organization. And it is used as a recruiting tool, by the way. Uh, people would ask over the years, what keeps you up at night? I tell them, certainly not recruiting people, even in the worst of time. Why? Because we have a damn good reputation that attracts the best when they graduate out of college. Why? Not because we are a transportation company and delivering packages. How boring. It is because we're a good company. <laughs> uh, it's the truth. I mean, how, I, I imagine you going and saying, you know, we are, we are in the business of, uh, uh, to a Harvard grad and say we deliver packages. Is he going to look at you? 
but, but, but we do, and we attract the best. We attract the best because it is on how, and how we conduct ourselves uh, uh, inside the community. So uh, let me throw at you some of the things that, that we, 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 act, we, we feel that we need to act responsibly in the community that we, do, we, we, we are in. The Arab world has 15% unemployment, endemic, historical, has not changed for, for years, will not change for a long period of time. 60% of our population is under the age of 24. 45% of our population is under the age of 15 today. Imagine the amount of young people that are going to be going into the labor market. 100 million people is the challenge, we are told by the World Bank, by 2020 that we need to create. Historically, governments employed all these people. Today, governments cannot employ anymore. Cannot employ anymore. The private sector, even if we keep the 15% unemployment, you still need to create that 100 million jobs. And we talk about globalization, and we talk about how this affects you also here in the United States, because we've heard a lot about what happens to these disenchanted uh, kids who are sitting on the block having no work. Who affects them? Who influences them? Who gets them to do things that we might not be interested uh, or, or happy about in the West or in the East or next door to where I live? Is there a responsibility for businesses to look at that if governments are not addressing it? Because people will tell you this is a government, uh, this is in, specifically in my part of the world, the government needs to address these issues. So uh, uh, let me uh, throw another piece of, uh, of information at you. Uh, in the GCC, which is the Gulf Cooperation Council, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, etc., uh, a survey was done by McKinsey by, by, for 400 uh, businesses. Look what, at, at the raw material that is coming out of our colleges. It says 63% of our uh, graduates that uh, have problems in, in understanding what problem solving is, critical thinking, practical skills, 50% of 57% don't, don't know how to uh, have, have issues with practical skills, written communications, people management, and 50% and, and don't understand even the concept of teamwork. So these are the people that are graduating and coming to work in, in our environment. Maybe these are good for government jobs, bureaucracies. <laughs> But I certainly tell you, we will not employ people that are like that. And, and, and we, have, we have two responsibilities here, either to educate them while they're graduating. So before they get off the conveyor belt, because our education system is a conveyor belt system. You know, they keep rolling them out. They can read and write, but they can't do anything else. But that doesn't do anything for me. That doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't do anything for government. It doesn't do anything for the employability of these people who are going to be the future of our countries at the end of the day. Because most of them will probably pop up and become leaders, become leaders. And if you don't act very early on. The other challenge is what do you do with them once they're inside your organization? Because you can't wait. You can't sit and say, you know, if they're not graduating uh, uh, properly from the, from the colleges, then what am I going to do about it? Let me go and employ maybe expatriates, maybe bring people from other countries. But then... I'm not solving the problem. I'm solving my immediate problem as a business, but I'm not solving a national problem, which, is, which will come back to bite me. If I think on a sustainability perspective, if I think long term, 